Are you just feeling inferior, or do you have an inferiority complex? It's only natural to feel inadequate at times. There are going to be situations where you don't think you have the abilities or tools needed to do something. That's natural. Each of us has his or her own talents, strengths, and weaknesses. You're just not going to be the best at everything. So feeling inferior from time to time is normal, and it's also healthy. If you think you could be better at some task or ability, you might decide to improve your skill set. If a feeling of inferiority leads you to compensate by getting better, that's a normal and healthy way to progress in life. If this happens to you, there probably isn't anything to be concerned about. A problem begins to develop when someone feels worthless and inferior, inadequate and incapable most of the time. If you persistently doubt your contribution to the human race, and possibly even your abilities to do simple things, you may be experiencing more than simple inferiority. This is how the American Psychology Association, or APA, defines the more serious inferiority complex. A basic feeling of inadequacy and insecurity deriving from actual or imagined physical or psychological deficiency. Signs of an inferiority complex? So, how do you spot normal insecurity? What are some of the signs of an inferiority complex as opposed to just not feeling adequate every now and again? These are a few of the red flags to look for. Any and every criticism, big or small, has you obsessing over it and feeling bad for days. You're an absolute perfectionist, and if something isn't nearly perfect, it isn't good enough for you. You feel different than everyone else. You're always trying to please others rather than yourself. You can't stop comparing yourself to people that are the most successful. You always feel like you should be better than you are. You put on a facade. You intentionally hide who you really are from the world because you're afraid you won't be accepted. These situations increase your risk of becoming depressed and developing anxiety. Left untreated, this complex leads to self-hatred, underperformance in relationships and careers, and health problems caused by constant stress. Self-destructive behavior may even lead to self-harm and suicide attempts. Talk to a health professional if you have any questions. Psychotherapy is a treatment that works often to solve the problem. Seeking professional help is always smart when your mental and physical health are concerned. Reminding yourself of the many gifts and abilities you have is another way of battling feelings of inferiority. Feeling inferior? Stop assuming others are thinking about you. Inadequate, incapable, subordinate. These are words that describe feelings of inferiority. We don't believe we're sufficiently capable enough to perform a task. They're often experienced when we judge ourselves and then compare that judgment to others. We find ourselves in a situation where we believe we're inferior to other people. Many times these feelings are entirely inaccurate. In no way, shape, or form do they reflect the reality of an experience. Even so, because of influences which can sometimes be traced back to our childhood, we feel like we're playing second fiddle to everyone else. When this experience is occasional, it probably is no cause for alarm. When it happens frequently, it can be a sign of an inferiority complex. Do you routinely analyze your behavior, especially in relationship to what you believe others are thinking about you? Are you quite certain that whenever you leave the safe confines of your home, that you're being judged by others? This chronic insecurity about your self-worth and abilities can negatively affect so many aspects of your life. Most of the time, that thinking is misplaced. Stop worrying about what others think, because they're probably not thinking about you at all. When you feel like you don't measure up very well to others, it can be very unsettling. You may realize there are things you can do that most other people either can't do very well or can't do at all. That makes you feel good. On the flip side, the person with a complex of inferiority believes that in most situations, most of the time, and in most environments, they are lower in status and ability than just about everyone. This happens when a person worries about what others are thinking about their appearance, their actions, their abilities, their beliefs, and just about everything else that makes them who they are. Guess what? Most people aren't thinking about you. So that means if you're feeling inferior because you believe others are judging you negatively, you're wasting an opportunity at greatness. At the very least, you're stressed out and anxious needlessly, and those emotions can lead to physical and mental health problems. On the other side of the coin, let's imagine that someone really is spending mental energy critiquing or judging you. You're doing something right or wrong, and they notice. In this situation, your feelings of inadequacy might seem to be justified. But are they really? You can't control the thoughts of others. In many cases, you can't control your own thoughts. You have literally thousands of thoughts every day. Some of them last less than a second. That doesn't mean they're correct or that they should be acted upon. Many of them are created due to negative self-talk and your brain simply processing information and cleaning house. Since you can't control even your own thoughts, 
don't give them power. Choose a more positive thought if your ideas lead to feelings of inferiority. If someone is or isn't thinking about you, you have no power over that. So you're wasting your time by feeling inadequate. The only thing you control in your life is how you respond to your thoughts. You can't change the thoughts of someone else, and quite frankly, if you think other people are worried about you most of the time, truthfully, they aren't. Kick feelings of inadequacy and inferiority to the curb by realizing that other people aren't worried about what you're doing most of the time. If they do, who cares? Don't give them that power over you. Choose to remember that you are capable and skilled in so many ways. Then, anytime you experience angst or anxiety because you're trying to live in someone else's head, stop it. This pointless activity is causing you needless mental stress and strain, and that's keeping you from being your best self. Choosing the right therapist to treat your inferiority complex. There isn't always a right or wrong way to do something. Choosing the therapist to treat your inferiority complex is like that. You can talk to friends and get a reference. Perhaps you use the internet to check out local mental health professionals. Whatever you do, you should be applauded. You're actively seeking an answer to your situation, and that's commendable. So many people move through life wondering if they could create a better reality. They're not sure that their mindset, their beliefs, and the actions that come from those beliefs are correct or appropriate. Even with the idea that they can improve their mental health in some way, they take no action. Sometimes it's because they're afraid people will make fun of them. They could be scared about what a therapist will tell them. They simply don't want to find out that the issue is bigger than they'd imagined, so they just continue to suffer mentally and emotionally in so many ways. Maybe you've already decided on a therapist at this point. Whatever stage you're at of the treatment process, there are certain things you need to ask to make sure you give yourself the best treatment possible. Do they accept your insurance provider? This is important so you keep as much of your hard-earned money in the bank. Even if you have plenty of savings and view this as an investment in your health, and you should, why not let your insurance take care of the cost? Have they treated inferiority complex and chronic feelings of low self-esteem before? A therapist doesn't necessarily have experience treating different mental health conditions and complexes. Most people don't ask this question because they just assume a good therapist has experience treating a number of conditions. Make sure you ask this question to get the best care possible. What's going to happen during a typical session? You know there's going to be a question and answer session with your therapist. Then you'll have a conversation covering relevant areas. It's still a good idea to ask what a typical session is like, as well as how long it lasts. What psychological philosophies or theories influence your treatment? There are different principles and treatment protocols which are based on psychological philosophies. Find out what has influenced your therapist and what treatment method he's going to be using. Then do your own research. Some treatment protocols will make more sense to you than others. This can help you feel comfortable about the therapist you choose. What do they consider as an area of expertise for them? Do they specialize in treating one or a few mental health issues? Are they more of a general practitioner? How long have they been in business? There are certainly going to be therapists who deliver great results with their very first patient. Still, you might have more confidence in someone who's been in business for a while. Checking out online mental health directories can help you find a therapist for treatment. A few popular and reputable directories include those found at goodtherapy.org, psychologytoday.com, and zencare.co. Use them to locate a therapist and then ask the questions above to ensure you're getting the best care possible. Five Methods for Overcoming an Inferiority Complex You are the only person who has control of the thoughts in your head. While you might believe that your inner voice is looking after your best interests, this isn't always the case. Your self-talk is frequently critical. It tells you that you're incapable and inferior and you don't measure up well when compared to others. This can create a vicious cycle that feeds on itself. People who feel inferior don't try as hard. Sometimes they withdraw from human interaction. When they see themselves as incapable of socializing normally, their feelings of inadequacy grow, so they withdraw even more. The snake eats its tail and this damaging cycle continues. Do you feel inferior or not as good as others at times? That's normal, but if you experience these feelings regularly, you may have an inferiority complex. The best thing to do is talk to a mental health professional. They'll recommend some or all of the following five methods for overcoming a chronic belief that you're not as good as others. One, Express positive affirmations. Talk to yourself positively. Do this when you experience negative emotions or thoughts of self-doubt. Speaking to yourself positively rather than negatively helps erase feelings of inferiority. Two, talk therapy. This is likely the first treatment method your therapist is going to turn to. 
It can help you cope with any symptoms of an inferiority complex that may be limiting or harming you. The goal is to identify unhealthy patterns of behavior and what causes them. A review of past experiences and memories can help you uncover why you constantly compare yourself to others and see yourself on the weaker side of that comparison. 3. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy CBT is a typical practice in psychotherapy. It works to make a patient aware of negative thought patterns that lead to incorrect beliefs and sometimes self-harm. This practice teaches that thoughts are not always facts that should be acted upon. 4. Journaling Writing down your thoughts and feelings is incredibly therapeutic. This is something you can start doing yourself before you seek the help of a trained healthcare professional. Just start writing. There's no wrong or right way to get your feelings down on paper. 5. Medication A trained and licensed psychotherapist will turn to medication usually as a last resort. The medicine prescribed is often to treat symptoms of an inferiority complex, such as depression and anxiety. Chronically feeling you're inferior isn't healthy. It can swing a wrecking ball through your life and damage the quality of your personal and professional relationships. Inferiority complexes are treated successfully using the five practices we just listed. They improve your self-image and confidence while helping you view yourself as a quality individual. Using Adlerian Therapy to Treat an Inferiority Complex There are many ways to treat an inferiority complex. Sometimes talking with a therapist helps to show an individual that their mindset is unjustified. In some cases, medication may be prescribed. One successful treatment protocol is Adlerian therapy, named after its founder. Psychologist Alfred Adler developed several theories about psychotherapy and feelings of inferiority. He founded the idea of an inferiority complex in the first part of the 20th century. His treatment system is based largely on a person's viewpoints. We sometimes have beliefs that might not line up with what's really happening. Someone who chronically feels anxious and inferior has belief systems that are keeping them from creating a desired outcome or achieving a goal. In many cases, many of these views and beliefs are incorrect. They're totally unjustified. If you want to plant tomatoes, you can't use sunflower seeds. No amount of positive thinking and the best gardening skills is going to turn those sunflower seeds into delicious tomatoes. It just isn't going to happen. This is what Adlerian therapy hopes to identify. It focuses on an individual's insights and beliefs. If they want desperately to get from point A to point B, and this is something that's very achievable, why isn't it happening? What does the person believe as opposed to what's really going on? Feelings of inferiority often come from negative patterns. We all have bad habits. Did you know some of them are rooted in your childhood experiences? This is what Alfred Adler believed. Adults develop negative patterns of behavior due to things that happened to them as children. Through talk sessions, these damaging childhood experiences are identified. The adult is shown how to reframe current thoughts and beliefs based on those issues that were endured as a child. A part of this treatment includes a practice called values clarification. A therapist helps a patient clearly identify what values are most important to them. Then they show how damaging childhood-based patterns of behavior are keeping them from living according to their values and achieving the things they find truly important. This is a proven way to boost feelings of self-worth and self-pride. People suffering from an inferiority complex learn to stop living their adult lives viewing the world through childhood lenses. The wide-reaching damage that chronic feelings of inferiority can cause can be dramatically reduced and in some cases totally eliminated with Adlerian therapy.